We are back with you answering your questions about COVID-19 and the vaccine. Uh, we have uh, Cone Health's Chief Physician Executive, Dr. Bruce Swords with us answering your text questions. All right, so far in the queue, this is what we have. The first question is, are headaches part of the recovery from COVID-19 and what should you do about them? Yeah, the short answer to that is they could be. So we do know that people with COVID-19 uh, can have headaches and they can last for a while after COVID-19. I think um, typical measures are in order. So if you take Tylenol or ibuprofen, uh, either of those are likely okay unless you've got a medical situation where it's not okay and you would know that. Um, so time will take care of it most of the time. Uh, this person is asking, once I'm vaccinated, will I have to be doing this every single year like the flu shot? Another really good question, and we don't know. We know that the vaccine works. We know that people need to be fully vaccinated, uh, and they have a period of time where they um, don't have to worry so much about getting uh, COVID. We don't know what happens in a year, and we'll find that out uh, with everybody else, whether people have to get booster shots um, every year or not. All right, this person is saying, my doctor just informed me that he found COVID-19 antibodies in my blood test, that I must have been asymptomatic, um, and it happened a while back. He's telling me that I don't have COVID-19 right now, just the antibodies. Is there something that I should be doing? Yeah, first of all, I agree with your doctor. It's very likely that if you have the antibodies circulating in your blood, you've been exposed. You either had no symptoms or very minor symptoms and don't remember it. Uh, so count yourself lucky. I don't think you need to do anything specific now other than get your vaccine when you're eligible to get the vaccine. So even people who've, have, who've had COVID should get the vaccine when they're eligible to get it. Okay, this next question is, can you explain how the new COVID strains can be more contagious than the original? What makes one strain more contagious than the other since they both are transmitted the same way? You're right, they are both transmitted the same way. And we think that the way that uh, these variants are transmitted more easily is related to uh, this protein that you've all heard about called the spike protein and this spike protein in some variants is easier for your body really to latch onto. And if it is easier to latch onto, it's likely more transmissible than uh, the original SARS-CoV-2 virus. Okay. Um, and this person is now asking, how long does the vaccine actually last? And can you transmit the virus if you have been vaccinated? Yeah, no easy questions tonight. <laughs> so the, um, the, the, uh, we, we know the vaccine lasts for a few to several months after uh, somebody's been fully vaccinated. Uh, remember, we started vaccinating people in December. Uh, the study started in July. So we don't have a lot of experience to really know how long the vaccine lasts. And that gets to this idea, will we need a booster or not? We will learn that over time. The next part of that question is, can you transmit the virus even though you've been vaccinated? Uh, there are some indications that maybe you can. It's not well studied, and it would really have to be um, very specific circumstances where that could happen. And generally speaking, if you've been vaccinated, your ability to transmit the disease is a lot, lot less than if you haven't been vaccinated, if you can at all. Mm -hmm. This is a follow-up question for someone who just had their second vaccine yesterday afternoon. They said that they woke up this morning with the most horrible headache, still throbbing, nothing I take has helped. Any suggestions? Yeah, if you've sort of done usual measures, uh, the, the thing that you're going to need to do now is wait. And with almost certainty tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and feel a lot better because people will have 24 to 36 hours of symptoms after the second vaccine if they have symptoms at all uh, and they will go away um, in that time frame so uh, sorry it happens it can happen 
and those symptoms will go away. Mm -hmm. This question is, we have both had our shots over a month ago. Can we still be a carrier? It, it's really unlikely. You're not going to be a carrier. Um, with In these very limited circumstances, it's possible that maybe if uh, someone gave me the virus and I'm vaccinated right now and I sneezed five minutes from now, <laughs> uh, maybe then I could transmit it. Uh, but those circumstances are just so unlikely I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so this is kind of a follow-up to the new CDC guidelines, I'm sure, because this person is asking, if your whole family is fully vaccinated, except my two grandchildren, ages 14 and 10, can we be together? Yeah, really good question. And it gets into the nuances of the CDC recommendations, which I think is great. So if everybody's been vaccinated except for uh, young, healthy people, yes, you can be together, and yes, you cannot have masks. And the reasoning behind that is your healthy grandchildren are at so, such low risk of having serious disease from COVID uh, that th that risk isn't worth calculating um, when you're thinking about the risk-benefit ratio of getting together. This next question is, I plan on getting the shingles vaccine soon. How long after the shingles vaccine do I need to wait before I get my COVID-19 vaccine? So that's not been studied. We don't know. And um, there's no reason why you should really separate them in time. Uh, the shingles vaccine can have its own side effects. Uh, they're short-lived as well. Uh, if you're if you were eligible to get the COVID vaccine the following day, I would get it. So whenever you're eligible to get the COVID vaccine, get it. OK, we're going to take a quick break, but we are still keeping the lines open for you to text your questions. Again, 336-379-5775. We'll be right back.